Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for your testimony. Uh, I was at Heritage Flight at Davis Monthan this weekend, uh, climbed up the ladder of the F-35, talked to the pilots and maintenance, and uh, it was great. Great to have it there. It's an amazing capability that we do need uh, fifth generation fighter to, uh, as fast as possible, as you've all testified. Uh, my focus, as you all know, is uh, on the low end of the spectrum and uh, it replacing uh, CAS and combat search and rescue capabilities um, where you need continuous coverage, uh, loiter time, lethality, survivability from uh, small arms and those types of things. Uh, one of the important uh, uh, capabilities for that is a gun. And uh, so I've seen in some of the reports uh, some challenges with uh, the accuracy of the gun, uh, the gun's sight. Uh, so General Bogdan, can you give an update on, on what's going on with the gun and uh, testing and, and the way ahead? Yes, ma'am. We're in the process of qualifying both guns on the A model, which is an internal gun, and on the B and the C model, it's a potted gun underneath the center line of the airplane. Um, we, we've done ground testing, we've done in-flight testing, and, and there are fundamentally two issues that, we've, uh, that we have to address in, in the coming months of development. Um, the first of those being um, on, on the A model, when you shoot the gun, because it is off center from the nose of the airplane, it creates a yaw, and as and soon, and soon as the gun is shot, the nose of the airplane moves, and you know, ma'am, as, as an experienced fighter pilot, if you wanna put the bullets on the target, That's you need good. to keep the nose steady. Exactly. Um, we know what that problem is, we have the software and flight control fixes in place, and we are testing those as we speak. We will let you know if we need to continue to evolve the software and the flight controls to improve it, but we know what that problem is and we know how to fix it. Um, the, the second issue we have is um, with the heads-up display in the helmet. We don't have a fixed heads-up display. And when you're aiming, and you would know this, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it simple, um, the pipper, which is the little aiming reticle um, used to put on the target for where you want the bullets to hit, has to be fairly steady. And, and today, with the movement of the helmet and the movement of the airplane, that pipper is moving around too much. Right. We understand that problem also. We understand the feedback loop between the airplane's motion and what's going on with the helmet. So we have those software fixes coded and in the airplane. Whether they prove to be sufficient such that the gun can be fired accurately remains to be seen. Those tests are gonna happen this, this spring and this summer, and, and we will let you know that. But, but you are right, we've encountered some issues with, with the gun, and, and we need to improve those. And there's also issues with uh, moving targets, as, as I understand, and the ability to self-lays versus buddy lays, and as you know, in a continuous cast scenario, you're often yo-yoing uh, to the tanker uh, as a Sandy or a, a flight lead, so what's the status of that? So I'll, I'll just briefly talk about that and, and maybe let my warfighting um, brothers here um, discuss it. Uh, the original capability to hit a moving target on this airplane was embodied in a weapon um, that is no longer allowed to be used in our inventory. So we did have a capability that was on the books to hit moving targets. And when that weapon was removed from the US inventory for treaty reasons, um, we lacked the ability to hit a moving target until our follow-on modernization program where we will put in a moving target tracking capability with, with um, our targeting system. In the interim, the Air Force and the Marine Corps have come to us and said, in the meantime, between now and about 2022 or 23, with that moving target capability, we have another weapon that we'd like you to introduce on the airplane, and I'm gonna leave that to yeah, I'm familiar with that, and I appreciate we can follow up on that, that later. Thanks for the update. Um, my, my last uh, question is to General Harris, uh, and I agree what Emma Miller said about the complementary uh, focus of the, uh, of the inventory, and we've had many discussions about it. it's not the F-35 versus the A-10. Uh, I think we need both those capabilities in order to have sp full spectrum operations. We've included in the NDAA a fly-off uh, for the F-35 and the A-10 uh, as part of the testing and evaluation. Um, and it seems the Air Force has uh, made public statements that the A-10 is going to stick around for a while and maybe there'd be a follow-on light attack aircraft. Uh, is there any discussion to remove the A-10, replacement of the A-10 from the requirements document, to just let the F-35 off the hook for that requirement? That would save resources, that would let the vendor off the hook, and we'd be able to move forward to have a complementary inventory of the F-35 and the A-10 or the follow-on to the A-10. 
Yes, ma'am, that's a great question, thank you. Uh, I would expect that the F-35 is still gonna be held to the same higher requirement of being able to do CAS as a mission because the Air Force feels that our multi-role fighter of the future needs to be able to do that. Yes, we have de determined that we're gonna keep the A-10 and some other fourth gen fighters for the next decades based on our F-35 buy rate. So we have the CAS as a mission and we expect all of our air to ground type airplanes to be able to come. And I agree, CAS is a mission in the environment that it needs to operate in. But I think, again, removing that specific specific requirement of replacing the A-10 or in the low end of the spectrum is something I'd really like to follow up with the Air Force on. It would save some resources and allow us to move forward in a complementary way. And I'm out of time, so thanks, uh, if, thanks, gentlemen. Chairman, if I could, I'd like, as a Marine, with our bread and butter is close to your support, I'd like to answer that, man, if you got a second. I'm, I'm a career heropod, so I'm uh, and I'd actually challenge the F designation on the F-35. This is an F, it's an A for an attack, it's also electronic warfare, and we're seeing that. Our weapons school, and our trained range manual, it's a, there's a small portion of that that's the fighter mission. It's a lot of the attack. What I've found, it's, it's different than the A-10 they're here um, in that using the sensors on the airplane, we have to do close air support. What I've got now in this airplane, what we have now as a nation in this airplane, is I can do, there's no place where I, my soldiers or sailors or airmen or Marines are that we, we can't do close air support. As the CEO of the weapons school, to do CAS and be effective at CAS, you've got to have air superiority. Um, or at least localize your superiority. This airplane allows you to do that one package. We're doing fighter shots and, and bomb delivery at the same time. The other thing we're doing is through the weather with the APG-81. Uh, it's, it's a picture quality uh, target view for the pilots. And so we had a group out there that was trying to do uh, close air support in uh, North Carolina the other day. And uh, they're out there flying and the Ford Air Control says the weather's moved in. I think we have to knock this off and says, hey, we see the target. Let's let's go. And General, so. I couldn't agree with you more. I know I'm way over at time. We need that capability. Yeah. It's amazing. But we also need to be able to stay on station more than 20 to 30 minutes, have more than 180 bullets, have more than two bombs on station and be able to survive a direct hit. So we need both from my perspective. But thank you. Well, Representative McSally, I want to thank you for your, your tireless effort to ensure that we have close air support capability and your advocacy for the A-10. It is incredibly important that you bring your expertise, so, so thank you for that. Uh, turning to Mr. Carp